the I'll let you go at three, you probably go back to your little spying office and write everything down. And I thought, well, you're not far from the truth there. <laughs> Sainsbury's, I wonder if they're suspicious of me too. I've been asking questions about fridges, chill chains and cleaning. I decide to confront the boss and I'm scared I'm going to be rumbled. I'm really nervous, my heart is racing. By the time I meet my boss Christine to confront her about my concerns, I'm a bag of nerves. But I needn't have worried. She's not suspicious, just annoyed. In an ideal world, Everybody in Sainsbury's would do their job exactly right in an ideal world. Are you perfect? No, but I try and be. Yeah. No. There you go. Nobody is perfect. In an ideal world, everything would be taken off the counter, which is you know, every night, faithfully. Do you know what? Every single tray, everything should be taken off the counter. All those counters should be wiped down every single night. Are they done? No. I do accept what you're saying. And yes, there are things that happen that shouldn't be happening. That's put me in my place. Don't think I'll be doing that again. James and I are still undercover when we receive information from a new whistleblower. We're told he's been working in the meat industry for years. He says if I meet him, he'll give me information that will raise serious concerns about the quality of meat being supplied in Tesco. I used to love food before I started this investigation. I was always eating, always. But my appetite has just gone completely out the window. I've lost a stone. What do I eat? Biscuits? All the things that are bad. I meet the whistleblower at a meat factory in the southwest. He's concerned that meat past its use-by date, that is the date at which meat can be illegal to sell, is being sold in some supermarkets. Food safety becomes a very serious issue when you pass the use-by date. It's deceptive and it's right out of order. But more than this, he's worried it could have health consequences. If a customer is buying a piece of meat out of good faith that you're paying good money for, you definitely don't deserve to worry about your health. James has been hearing stories of meat past its use-by date being sold at some branches of Tesco. So is it a busy counter? To help investigate, I'll get a job working right next to him on the meat counter at his branch in Woodford Green. So, uh, this is where you're going to be working. This is the meat counter. Um, I'm shooting it from the fish counter. With a helpful recommendation from James, I start work straight away. I quickly discovered that preparing meat is not one of my fortes. I've told Tesco that I'm experienced at handling meat, so I just have to hope no one's watching. But I must have made a good impression with someone. It's my third day, James is off, and I'm left completely alone to manage both the fish and the meat counter. They've left me on my own. Look. I've got two counters to manage and I've been here for three days. I don't even understand my own counter, let alone fish. Things seem pretty disorganised. I'm trying to check the dates on the meat. Before long, I find meat with no date on it at all. It's half leg of lamb. Didn't have any ticket information on it, any dates or anything. Thank you. I try to find out how old the meat is. With no managers around, I asked the more senior colleague on duty, Marlon, how to date some of the unlabeled fillet steaks. I don't know what the label is. I don't know what the label is. I, 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 I have to just take a guess because there's no label on it. But I know once you open something cut, yeah, it's not usually two to three days. OK. And then when you open that... Yeah. Neither of us has a clue how old this meat really is, 
And when we check out the meat in the chiller that's due to go out on the counter, there's no date on that either. OK. So how do I know what the date is on this, then? Well, there's no date on that one, though. Sorry? I said none of these have got dates on it. This meat is about to be put on sale to customers at the counter and we have no idea what the crucial date information really is. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a nice afternoon. It's the end of the day and I'm closing down the counter. I've been told to cover the meat overnight to keep it fresh. But all I can find is raggedy old plastic sheeting. Well, actually, they're black bin liners. And it appears it's the same bin liner which has been used every night. I'll check and ask about that, but it's not ideal, is it? With Tesco being a multi-billion pound company, I asked my boss, Greg, why we're reusing black bags to cover the meat night after night. That's all we use. You know, in all stores, I'm not going to lie to you, we all use black bags. You can use a black bag probably every three or four days or even a week and suck it. And, but if you have to get it cheap, that will cost more money, yeah, and to maintain that, it's going to cost a lot. So to save the largest retailer in Britain money, bin liners are used and reused for days at a time. There's a real risk that the bags could lead to an increased possibility of bacteria affecting the meat. And all to save peanuts. I've been living my double life for a few months now, and I'm getting closer to the dirty secrets behind some of the meat I'm selling. But it's getting harder to keep working undercover, as James is about to find out. He's coming back from lunch when he's suddenly called into a back office by security. He's been chosen for a random search, but James is wearing a secret camera. Okay. If you just want to empty your pockets onto the table. Okay. His pockets are full of wires. Just do what we call the elephant ears, which is just pull your pockets yeah. out. James has to pull his pockets out and think very quickly. Anything in your back pocket? I've got back pockets. Right, okay. Anything in your top pocket? Just in time, James manages to push the wires of his camera through the bottom of his pocket. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Oh, nice cheers, one. All right, cheers. It's a close call. One more. Oh my God. I can't breathe. He needs to warn me about what's happened in case I'm next. But with Marlon around, he has to play it down. I just got searched. Hey. That was very nice. Hey. What kind of sport did you have to do? Take my pockets out, and my hand around my neck. Do you want to have a search? Really? Yeah. Scared the life out of me, I tell you. Did they put me pat them down? No, they're not allowed to touch you. They're not allowed to touch you. It's all right, James. It's fucking close, I tell you. <laughs> It feels like we can't stay undercover much longer without being discovered. But there's one more secret still left to find, and it's lurking right behind the meat counter. I'm on shift one day when I notice the mincers giving off a very strange odour. This looks like it's smoking a bit, like it's cooking. Like there's smoke coming out of it. The mint seems to be coming out brown and slightly cooked. Can you And I definitely don't recognise Barbara's approach to dismantling the mincer from my training. Oh, careful. Because <laughs> that's, that's cooked. Despite being partly cooked, the mince is reminced and sold later that day. This meat is not fit to eat, and selling it breaks every rule in the book. And James is next. Only what he's to witness is downright illegal. 
he spotted some stakes which are not simply beyond their sell-by date, but past their 